Welcome back to the second video about my full fly by wire electric outboard project, which is incidentally numbered one. That's because I already uploaded a video where we dove right in into the rough design and part selection for the throttle control and the battery management. And that video was number two, because logically it should have been the second video after the project kickoff. Anyway, card here, link in the description. So in this second video, which will be numbered one, we will do the actual project kickoff. Enjoy. Let's start by defining what's meant by full fly-by-wire. And it's not about all these wires here I stuck into the head. First, the throttle should be controlled by an electronic interface and not by a mechanical one. Second, the steering should also be controlled by an electronic interface and not by a tiller. This will enable the outboard or outboards, I have two of these, to be controlled by an electronic steering wheel slash rudder jock and an electronic throttle lever. Two projects I have already finished. Cards here, links in the description. But that's not where the story ends. You see, we still have a one-to-one -one relation between our control inputs and what the outboards do. If you go with the steering wheel right, the outboards will steer right. If you go full throttle, the outboards will go full throttle. The real fun starts when you replace those conventional controls by a joystick. Preferably one with three axes, so you no longer tell while a wheel and a throttle the outboards what to do, but you tell the joystick what you want the boat to do. For example, you could tell your boat to go sideways without turning or diagonally without turning or to turn on the spot. Admittedly, that's nothing new. For example, Yamaha has such a system for their larger gasoline outboards and you can buy such a system from Volvo Penta for their larger internal combustion inboard engines. But I digress. This project is about making a small electric outboard or two fully electronically controllable. Throttle and steering. As a starting point, I will use uh, two one kilowatt, well, to be exact, 960 watts, Haswing Protura 2.0 24 volt electric trolling motors. I already made an unboxing video and a couple of teardown and reverse engineering videos, as you can see, about these things. At least one card here, more links in the description. There are three reasons why I choose that one kilowatt Haswing. The first reason is not really specific to the Haswing, but to the one kilowatt. But the other two reasons are. The first reason, I wanted something with around one kilowatt of power that ran at 24 volts. That of course limited the field of electric outboards slash trolling motors I could choose from. But why one kilowatt? And here we come into legalities, that is regulations. And Germany is the land of regulations. And I'm specifically referring here to the KLFZ, KV Strich Binsch, or the Kleinfahrzeuge Kennzeichnungsverordnung Binnenschifffahrt. 3F here in a row. You have got to love German. In English, Small Vehicles Registration Regulation dash Inland Navigation. And that regulation states that all small vehicles, that is everything below 20 meters, on inland waterways, so rivers, lakes, channels, 
got to get a registration number and has to show that registration number on certain parts of the hull. Now, getting such a registration number for an off-the-shelf vessel with off-the-shelf engines is neither complicated nor expensive. However, getting such a registration number for, let's say, a self-built vessel with highly modified engines is quite a hassle. You have to submit a lot of paperwork, plans, etc. Fortunately, motor vessels with no more than 2.21 kilowatts or 3 metric horsepowers are exempt from that regulation. And so my conclusion was to stay below 1.105 kilowatt per engine. R remember, I will use two of those on my little dinghy. The decision to go with 24 volts was a no-brainer. If you have a 1 kilowatt motor that runs at nominal 12 volts, you need to supply 83.3 amps to it. That's a lot of copper in the conductors and some large connectors. And you can half that amperage to 41.7 amps simply by increasing the voltage to 24 volts. So 24 volts it was. Reason 2, and that's now of course specific to the Hesswing Proteras, is the value you get for your money. The non-Chinese offers, and I'm thinking here about the torpedoes and the e-propulsions, are two to three times more expensive. And I was not gonna destroy two electric outboards for 1200 bucks each, just because I fancy a bit of soldering. The Hesswings, while cheap, are still not too cheap. So they are sold by marine stores, so they are available outside the Amazon, eBay, AliExpress sphere. And you get also spare parts for these things, like uh, anodes, which you definitely need, and uh, props, which I probably will need, uh, knowing my <clears throat> boating skills. They also have no unnecessary features that I will not be using anyway. For example, a working battery indicator. We saw in the unboxing video that the battery indicators of these things are awful. Or a kill switch tether. Basically, they work and they are not too flimsy. The third reason is weight and simplicity. The Hesswings come in at 6.7 kilograms, according to specification, that's 14.8 pounds, while the e-propulsions and torpedoes are all over 10 kilograms, or 22 pounds. If I had to describe the Hesswing Proteras or other Chinese trolling motors, I would say they are round aluminum broomsticks with a motor pot at one end and a head with a tiller throttle at the other. That of course implies easy disassembly, which I'm in desperate need of. Finally, it has a straightforward, easy detachable transom attachment mechanism. And uh, with detachable, I don't mean detach it from the transom, but detach your broomstick, yeah, your shaft from the whole mechanism. It's quite easy. Once you remove the head, you can simply slide the broomstick, uh, sorry, the shaft, out of the transom attachment assembly. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is the best electric trolling motor ever. But for this project, it's a reasonable good choice, I think. Now that we know what fly-by-wire means in this context and what electric outboard that is trolling motor will be using, let's talk about what this project all encompasses. The motor driver, which is actually located down here in the pod and commutates the brushless DC motor, has to be controlled by an MCU via some motor control circuitry. That's basically digital to analog conversions. So digital signal from the MCU 
is turned into an analog control signal suitable for that motor driver. Then I want to monitor the power that goes into our motor driver. So we need some power monitoring that is current and voltage. And that's of course an analog to digital conversion. And the digital data is then transferred to the microcontroller unit. We already did the rough design and the part selection for these two blocks in the first video I published, which was numbered two. Card here, link in the description. I also have that pipe dream about using the current measurements because there is some AC component overlaid over our DC current to measure the RPM of the motor. But I'm still a little bit <clears throat> unclear how I want to do that. But anyway, if that works out, our MCU gets also digital data about the motor's RPM. So far we covered all the motor stuff, but we also need some steering. That is a way to actually turn the shaft of our outboard. And that will be done by a servo mechanism that is also digitally controlled by our MCU. How that servo mechanism will actually look like from a mechanical and from an electronical standpoint is still open. I first have to do some real world measurements how much torque is actually needed to turn the shaft. Finally, the MCU will be equipped with some RS485 driver that is connected to an RS485 bus that controls everything. That raises immediately the question why RS485? And if you're not familiar with RS485, I made a whole series about RS485 just a while ago. A card here, many more links in the description. So why RS485 and not a proper Marine, National Marine Electronics Association and MIA standard? And I also uploaded an overview over the NMIA standards some years ago. A card here, link in the description. First, let me point out that RS-485 is used in commercial marine applications. You get rudder drugs and throttle levers and whatnot with RS-485 interface. For example, the large Scania diesels, they support RS-485. And when we are talking about NMIA communication standards, we'll have to be specific about what NMIA standard we are talking. First, we have the NMIA 0183 in its different versions and also in its high-speed variant. These standards are, I'd say, loosely based on RS-232, respectively RS-422 and uh, staying in the NMIA standard language, they have one talker and multiple listeners. So one transmitter and multiple receivers on a line. Or more general, they provide a point to multi-point respectively multi-drop connection. Meaning it's not a bus, so it's absolutely not suitable for our application. Then we have NMIA 2000, which is currently probably the most used NMIA protocol and slowly but surely completely replacing NMIA 0183, at least in the long term. It's based on CAN, yeah, the hardware layer, and SAE J1939 as a protocol layer. Now, for CAN, you really need a hardware controller, either an external chip or one integrated in your MCU. Also, SAE J1939 is quite a complex protocol, so there is some software overhead to be expected. 
In conclusion, it's more effort and higher costs than an RS485 implementation. And at least in this application, there are no advantages over RS485. Finally, we have NMIA OneNet, which is really just NMIA 2000 over Ethernet. You don't really expect me to install an Ethernet switch on my dinghy, do you? Anyway, all this really just left me with RS485 as a viable option. Before I leave you, I want to give you the big picture. So our current project is about building some motor and a steering controllers for two outboard motors. Currently, I plan to have two 24 volt batteries powering these motors. And of course, at one point, we will need battery monitors for these batteries. On the other side, we have a controller, which is the bus master, and that has the wheel, the throttle, and probably a joystick attached. And that controller obviously sends commands to our motor steering controllers. In addition, there will be a monitor listening in to everything that happens on the bus and displaying that information in a nice graphical form. And everything will be communicating via an RS485 bus. That's it for today. I guess the next video will not be a project video, but a further teardown of my electric trolling motor. I have to get rid of the head completely before we can proceed with the project. Till then, bye.